Many would agree Theresa May is a bad Prime Minister. But why? The EU cannot and the EU will not delegate the application of its customs policy and rules, VAT and excises duty collection to a non-member who would not be subject to the EU's governance structures. Any customs arrangements or customs union, and I always uh, said that the EU is open to a customs union, must respect this principle. And in any case, a customs union which would help to reduce friction at the border would come with our common commercial policy for goods. May has to deliver Brexit, also has to accept the EU's customs rules in order to get access to the customs union. Then there's Northern Ireland. There's talk that we could remain in a customs union as part of the Brexit deal, which annoys many Remainers. I mean, she has a very weak position. She needs her minority coalition partners. She needs the 70 or 80 uh, Brexiteers in Parliament, and she's stuck with a weak negotiating position against the European. The only lucky thing she has is that so far her domestic opponents have been fairly incompetent and not willing to wield the knife. And so that, in a sense, is what she's hoping for. She'll keep nudging and trying to move this a little bit further forward and assume that her opponents don't have the guts to take her down. Mm. There's been talk of a leadership battle for a while now, but with no obvious candidate to replace her, it looks unlikely. There's also talk of a cabinet reshuffle. Will she try and rebrand the party as the new Remainer party to try and get rid of the alternate Remainer party that might form in the centre? Or will she try and embolden the Tory party to be the no deal party if Chequers never gets through? and therefore fill the cabinet with Brexiteers. It's going to be an anti-Brexit party, as it happens. It's also going to be the build as being a centrist party, isn't it? Now, for me, does this not just show how out of touch these people really are? Why is Jeremy Corbyn doing well? Why is uh, the Tory right on the march? You know, why right across the EU are anti-establishment parties doing well at pretty much every election? In some cases, new parties. Look at France, you know. Uh, well, it's because people have had enough of the status quo, haven't they? People have had enough of, essentially, this boring middle ground centre. So the idea that they would want to set up a centrist party to stop Brexit maybe, to me, shows how rampantly out of touch they are. But there's no denying that there are many in the political world that want to stop Brexit. Some are trying to completely devalue the entire Brexit process. A pro-Brexit campaigner, Aaron Banks, is facing a criminal inquiry into alleged electoral law offences during the EU referendum. It's claimed that the millionaire Banks was not the real source of millions of euros of funding given to the Leave.eu campaign. Some MPs are now calling for Brexit to be halted while the UK's National Crime Agency investigates. Well, But very quickly after this news broke, Another news leak was announced. Jeremy Corbyn left home without commenting on the criminal investigation into allegations of anti-Semitism in the party he leads. A leaked Labour Party dossier of allegations had been handed to the Metropolitan Police Commissioner herself following an LBC radio interview in September. Expressions such as, we shall rid the Jews who are a cancer on us all, or suggesting you push Jews off a tall building, that's certainly worth a look at, as they say in policing so terms. If somebody makes an allegation to us which contains something like that, absolutely we will take it seriously, we will scope it, we will see whether a crime has taken place. These two events show just how divided the UK political establishment is, and how willing they are to stab each other in the back. The Windrush scandal, one of the reasons why May Lawless, Amber Rudd, resigned was caused by incompetent advisers advising her the wrong information. That's her words, not mine. Now, could it be that they were working against her and working for another cabinet member, Boris Johnson, perhaps? Here's Amber Rudd trying to defend austerity in terms of knife crime in London. It is self-evident that if you had no police on the streets, there would be more crime. But you do, you just completely misunderstand the scale of the problem and the causes of these crimes. If you say, if we have more police on the road, on the streets, then it would all be over. May is the product of a divided party in a divided parliament in a country divided that's begging to be liked by the outside world. And nothing is more evidential of this 
than in our foreign policy. Just watch the way Jeremy Hunt defends the Saudi killing and compare it to the way Boris Johnson reacted to the Novichok killing. Well, if they've got nothing to hide, then they will and should cooperate. Um, and I've spoken to the Saudi foreign minister. I've asked him uh, this very, very point. And really, now it is up to Saudi Arabia to show the world that all these stories that we're reading about in the press that are causing such concern, such huge implications for freedom of expression, freedom of the press, uh, for the direction Saudi itself is taking as a country, uh, show us they're wrong by cooperating and helping the world get to the bottom of what looks like an absolutely terrible thing. The people from, from Port and Down, the, the, the uh, laboratory... So they have the samples, they yeah. They do. And, they, and they, they, they were absolutely categorical. And I asked the guy, myself, I said, are you sure? And he said, there's no doubt. So um, I, we have very little alternative but to take the action that we have taken. If you look closely, Theresa May comes across as a manipulative, betraying liar. The government took a gamble by delaying a maximum £2 stake on fixed odds betting machines. And after staking her career on a change of heart, tonight Tracy Crouch was left with no option but to resign. Telling the Prime Minister, from the time of the announcement to reduce stakes and its implementation, over £1.6 billion will be lost on these machines. In addition, two people will tragically take their lives every day due to gambling-related problems. In reply, Theresa May insisted, there has been no delay in bringing forward this important measure. We must ensure that this change can be implemented in an orderly and effective manner to make sure it delivers the results we all want to see. So there you have it. Whether you believe Theresa May is the product of a bad system or whether she is really, truly a bad person, I would like to know in the comments below. Join in the debate below and subscribe.